This week on The Splash. One tasty Father's Day tradition. Renovating our roads. And celebrating the newest federal holiday, Juneteenth. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. All so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. You know, there's nothing like waking up to a fresh hot bagel, and West Bloomfield residents love to bring home bagels to Dad on Father's Day. Erica Jones stopped by one local bagel shop who is celebrating more than just Father's Day this year. Father's Day brunch is not complete without a fresh hot bagel and cream cheese. New York Bagel in West Bloomfield is a community staple for families to pick up bagels and bring them home to Dad. A lot of people have been getting our bagels for many generations and many years, and it's a great Father's Day tradition for many people, especially early in the morning, to have bagels. And this year, the bagel shop is celebrating not only Father's Day, but also 100 years of fathers passing down the family business. New York Bagel has been around for 100 years. This is our 100 year anniversary, uh, started in 1921. Founded by my great grandfather, and then my, my grandfather and my father were both involved. My father's still involved. And I got involved about six and a half years ago. Sundays are always busy at New York Bagel, but Father's Day is not just any Sunday at the bagel store. It's one of the busiest days of the year. Goldsmith and his staff prepare for a line out the door from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. So Father's Day weekend is always a really busy weekend every year. We always have to bake a lot of extra bagels that day and make sure we have a lot more cream cheese than usual. Usually it's like three times as busy that day or two times as busy. Which involves, you know, ordering extra material and bringing in extra people. We look at, you know, previous years, what we've done, we sort of use that as a baseline. We're efficient, we move quickly, so we're always moving the line. And while the team is excited to open its doors to many loyal customers, they haven't forgotten to keep everyone safe by limiting crowds inside. Since uh, the pandemic began, we've only allowed five customers inside at a time. We still require masks. I'm trying to hope that more people will use our online ordering that's available to order online, and that way we can bring it right out to the car for them instead of having people line up to wait to go inside. Whether you online order or can't resist stepping inside to smell the bagels fresh out of the oven, you cannot forget all the fixings to go along with your breakfast. On top of all the house-made favorites, New York Bagel teams up with local partners to make sure your kitchen table is filled with everything you need. Plain cream cheese is definitely a classic to get with bagels, and people like the Nova Lox because that's fresh and it's also made here in Detroit. We sell a lot of tuna salad, white beef salad, egg salad. We have our fresh squeezed orange juice, which is uh, made by a partner of ours here in town called Route Juice. We sell a lot of uh, coffee. It's a, a house brew that's especially made for us by a local roaster. Those are the big movers on uh, on Father's Day. So what are you waiting for? Father's Day isn't the only day you can show your dad you love him with a fresh hot bagel. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Erica Jones. You can find more information on our website at civiccentertv.com slash New York Bagel. President Joe Biden's signature has made Juneteenth an official holiday, and people are thrilled to celebrate the historic day. Daniel Zivian stopped by a local Juneteenth event for the story. This Saturday marked the first official change to national civic life in several years. Juneteenth, an African-American holiday originally celebrated by freed slaves, will now be observed by Americans of all races and creeds. In line with a meteoric rise in popularity, West Bloomfield hosted its first ever Juneteenth event at West Bloomfield High School sponsored by the West Bloomfield Lakes Area Democratic Club. Member and event organizer Margaret Hall played a major role in bringing it to life. We were having a meeting one night. We talked about having Juneteenth as a celebration. And we haven't had a long time to plan this, but the, the event just grew and grew. And I, one night I was on the phone with them and I gave them a history lesson on what it was and how it's not celebrated and it should be. So we've been working very hard. We're going to have many, many vendors to come, a plethora of things happening. We're gonna have children's games, a storyteller. We're gonna have a live DJ. We're gonna have the Roadmasters Vet Club. We're also gonna have a proclamation proclaiming that Juneteenth will happen June 19th every year in West Bloomfield. On June 17th, President Joe Biden signed the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act, creating America's 12th federal holiday. But how did Juneteenth become prominent enough for Capitol Hill? 
The story of Juneteenth begins with the wartime signing of the Emancipation Proclamation, a policy which could only be enforced in the event of a Confederate surrender. On June 19, 1865, Union Major General Gordon Granger marched his troops through the streets of Galveston, Texas, announcing the Civil War's end and the emancipation of slaves. Joyous celebrations followed, giving birth to an annual holiday, which has slowly spread from Texas to being observed nationwide. More recently, Juneteenth experienced an unprecedented surge of awareness in the wake of 2020's protests, culminating in Thursday's bill signing. This is a celebration that we've been waiting for, for a very long time. And we're hoping that other people will celebrate it with us. We well deserve this holiday. We've had the shortest one in February, with 28 days for years. It's time that we get something else because the way I feel about it, we're black every day of our lives. We're not just black in February. And Juneteenth takes it to a whole nother level. Despite a sudden downpour, the Juneteenth celebration was a success for the community. With the added support of a drive-in COVID-19 vaccination clinic at the fire station next door. Going forward, Hall feels that, as always, there is work to be done. And even today, where you see where we are, we still don't feel like we're free. There's still a lot of things that are happening. So we're hoping that this is the beginning of finally the equality that we deserve as a people and that we deserve as human beings. For The Splash, I'm Daniel Zivian. To know more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash Juneteenth official. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, get ready to find a detour because Orchard Lake Road is looking at a new resurfacing project. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. I'll be seeing you in all of my favorite places with laughter and warm embraces all day through. The park where we play, the stoop across the way, that favorite cookie smell and big birds tree we love so well. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you. I love you too. With free COVID-19 vaccines, sunnier days are ahead. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org. I'll be seeing you. One of the things you can look for in your friends is a change in behavior. These can be big changes, they can be small changes in mood, physical appearance. They may be sleeping less or sleeping more, and drinking more, or their eating patterns may be different. One big change that can be pretty obvious is change in motivation. Do they no longer want to play basketball? Do they no longer want to play video games? Now that we're spending more time online and in virtual settings, it's really important to pay attention to the language that your friend is using and the words they're using to communicate. So when we text our friends, are they taking longer amounts of time to respond? Are they not responding at all? You don't have to be an expert to try to recognize these signs. The second that you feel it in your gut and that you're concerned, that's a second to have the conversation and open the door to what might be going on. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. Driving to and from work is never easy, and it might get even harder if you take Orchard Lake. Reporter Lawrence Nyland brings us the story on the future Orchard Lake resurfacing project happening in Kego Harbor. The summer road construction season has begun in earnest here in Greater West Bloomfield. One area mostly free of closures this year is Kego Harbor. But in two years, there will hopefully be a solution to all the accidents that interrupt traffic flow on Orchard Lake Road between Commerce and Middle Belt. Yeah, so it, not only is it the, is it the Ward's Point and the, and the traffic volume, um, that's a four-lane road with no center-left turn lane, which is 
uh, really kind of an old fashioned configuration. We don't build roads like that anymore because people turn left. And when there's not a left turn lane, they have to turn from one of the through lanes. And what we see inevitably in that kind of configuration is you have an increase in crashes. You have rear end crashes where people aren't expecting the car in front of them to stop to turn left and they run into them. Or we see sideswipe crashes where a car is not expecting the car in front of them to stop to turn left and they quickly shift lanes and not realizing there's a car next to them and they slam into the car next to them. Local residents and commuters were able to complete an online survey to contribute their thoughts on what a new Orchard Lake Road should look like. And there are several options. Well, it's a pretty well-developed area. There's not a lot of room to expand the road. And the federal funding that we got for 2023 for the road only allows us to resurface the road. It doesn't provide any funding for purchasing additional right-of-way, um, nor would we necessarily want to do that, because that would mean we'd end up taking buildings and knocking down buildings. We don't want to do that. We don't want to disturb the, the community. Um, there's, a, there's a great um, commercial district there. We don't want to negatively impact that. So what can we do within the existing um, curb lane, uh, curb mark, curbs there? So we uh, hired a consultant to do a study and they came up with several options. Um, one of them was where we reduce it from um, four through lanes, two lanes in either direction, to two through lanes in one direction, one through lane in the other direction with a center left turn lane. Um, we call that the unbalanced option for obvious reasons. And the other option is a traditional three lane road where we just drop each direction to one lane in each direction and a center left turn lane. The problem with the three lane option is it significantly reduces traffic capacity and causes is likely to cause further backup. Our, our computer modeling suggests there would be increased congestion. Um, with the unbalanced option, there would actually be um, most situations less congestion and, and, and safety improvements in both directions. And Craig wants to stress that the Road Commission will try to make this project as painless to residents and business owners as seemingly possible. It could be a lot worse. This is not a complete reconstruction. It's a resurfacing. Um, so it's not quite as intense as it could be. And we will um, maintain access to all the homes and businesses throughout the, the construction. But of course, it, it will be challenging when you take um, a lot of traffic and, and during construction, we'll probably close at least part of the road. We'll squeeze traffic down. Um, it'll, it'll definitely be challenging. Reporting for The Splash, this is Lawrence Nyland. For more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash road proposals. It is time for our newest weekly segment, Testing the Waters. Reporter Erica Jones checked in with kids and parents on Father's Day to find out what they love most about their dads. Every day is a great day to celebrate all the incredible dads out there, but it is Father's Day week, so let's take a little extra time to think about some of the things that make them so great. Tell me, what's your favorite thing about your dad or the father of your kids? Hi, Daddy. My favorite thing about my dad is when my mom leaves me go places. That Daddy always like lets me watch TV, especially I get in trouble, but I love Daddy still. Hot. That he always plays with me. That he tucks me in every night. I like when my dad some, does something like really funny. And he always um, goes to the beach with us sometimes. Um, it's because he reads books a lot and every day. Well, that he's always goofy and he, well, he takes care of us fishing. The father of my children, I think the best thing I like is, their, is the father-son relationship and how close they are to each other. And most importantly, what's your favorite thing about being a dad? It just makes me happy every day waking up knowing that I'm going to be a positive influence in their life. That's the best thing that ever happened to me. Don't forget, Father's Day isn't the only day to celebrate our dads. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Erica Jones. For more episodes of Testing the Waters, visit civiccentertv.com slash testing the waters. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, I'll sit down with personal trainer Jenny Bordlove. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Can I ask you a question? Why did you get vaccinated? I'd like to go to these school dances and spring break to have fun. I want to be in person for college next semester. I want to get out of this pandemic. I wanted to protect the people around me. Why did you get vaccinated? Because I'm really looking forward to hanging out with my friends. I just want to go to a show, dance around, not have to worry about anything, feel like I'm free again. So we can not miss out on the best years of our life. 
And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. This week, I'm joined by Jenny Boardlove, and Jenny helps keep our community fit by running a personal training business out of her house. She also teaches group fitness classes at local studios and recently gained a new certification. And Jenny, thanks so much for joining us. So tell us, uh, you offer classes out of your home and also in person and by Zoom still, right? Yes, thank you for having me, by the way. All of the above is true. I do in-home personal training at my house. I teach at a couple of studios, um, sports club in West Bloomfield and another local one, and they do have Zoom classes. So many ways to take a fitness class in this crazy time. I know, right? And, you know, of course, we've all heard about the quarantine 15 or 29 yes, or whatever it may true. be, right? And uh, with restrictions finally lifting completely, uh, where do you think the fitness industry is going to go now? You know, I think we're in a good place. I really do. I think there's a place for everything. Um, a lot of people started coming to me during COVID because, well, gyms were closed down. And when things opened up a little bit, they were able to come with me and not worry about the big crowds and one-on-one -on -one with me. It was your best option. So I think, and then people really started liking it. So I think people are going to stick with me. I think you always have those gym rats that miss their gym so much. Mm -hmm. They're going to go back to that. And there's still Zoom classes. I think a lot of people have found that they really like working, rolling out of bed, not worrying about they, what they look like, hopping on a Zoom workout class and going on with their day. So I, I honestly think there's room for everything. I don't think any gyms, any group fitness is in any danger of shutting down. I think there's a place for all of us, you know, find what you like and and, and do it, right? It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as far as you, I mean, so you, I had asked you earlier, um, as far as how people found out about you, and it's totally word of mouth for you, isn't it? It really is. It started out, um, I started doing this when my youngest son went back to, well, started kindergarten. So about um, 10 years ago, and I started out with just a girlfriend or two and like, come try it, come work out, you know, and little by little, one person tells another person and got a nice clientele going on now. And then also I do get some clients from people that take my classes that need a little more one on one. So word of mouth and um, just meeting people in my classes. So what is your number one fitness tip for people who maybe don't work out all the time, but want to get started? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I think you just have to find something that you like, you know, find something that you find tolerable. You're always going to have that people who really don't like any form of exercising. So I say, find what's the least tolerable, the most enjoyable for you. Just find something you're going to stick with, whether it's walking or whether it's taking a class or riding your bike. That's the number one thing. If you hate it, if you're miserable, you're not going to do it. So I would say find what you like. And also, um, I think keeping a schedule is good, you know, putting it on your calendar and sticking to it. Those would be my two main pieces of advice for people. So, okay, so when you say putting it on your calendar, you're talking about like scheduling it like a meeting almost. Oh, block out time for it. Yeah, stay consistent. So important. It's got to be part of your schedule. You know, we've heard a lot of talk about how kids have really um, changed during this. You know, recess was skipped, obviously, when they were learning at home, uh, stuff like that. So what do you say to parents who may have children who are struggling uh, to get their fitness level back up to where it was? Yeah, well, thank God, right? Things are opening up and the weather is nice. So that solves a problem right there. Get them outside, you know, and same. I would say the same for your kids. Find something they like to do. You know, if they hate running, they're not going to become a runner. They're not going to want to do it. So it might take a little time. You might have to try a few different sports here and there. Get together with a friend, sign up for a team. You know, there's plenty of things that are open now. Okay, the weather perfect. will definitely, the nice weather the will nice definitely weather. help with that. A little cold today, but yeah, the weather is going to warm up. It is up. a little cold for my taste too. <laughs> I like those hot summer days. Right. Um, so you have a recent new certification. Tell me what that I is. I do. So during COVID, I decided to get my certification and it's called the Pilates Reformer. And um, I kind of have it in the background here. It's kind of blocked by my TRX straps, but it's a form of Pilates. And Pilates is a lot of... Um, control with your core muscle. It's using your core to really move every single part of your body. It's mindful breathing. Um, so what it is, it takes a Pilates mat class and it puts it on this machine, um, which is called the Pilates Reformer. And there's different springs on there so you can add resistance. And every single thing you do on here is coming from your core. And um, 
this works to lengthen you. It works, it works to strengthen you. It stretches you out. And what's the best thing about it is it's no impact. You're not pounding. You don't have that hard impact on your joints. You can do it from lying. There's different positions on here. It's amazing how many things you can do on there. I'm still learning all the different things and it still amazes me. You can do it standing, sitting, whatever, but there's no impact on your body. So it's good for every age. It's one of those things that, um, you can just go on there and enjoy a really good stretch by using the resistance. And um, it also can really, really challenge you. So it's one of those machines that's able to um, help benefit everybody at all fitness levels. So are you, so you are offering Pilates then? Yes. Right? Okay, so yes. if anyone wanted to find you, how would they reach out to you? A couple of ways, you can contact the station and they can give you my name and number. I'm also on Facebook, Jenny Bordelove. Also on Instagram, at Jenny Bordelove. So pretty easy to find. Okay, perfect. And you are accepting new clients. Yeah. All right. Come join me. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to meet you. And you um, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon, okay? Enjoy the summer. Yeah, you too. Okay. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. And once again, we've been joined by Jenny Bordlove. Uh, we are going to take one final break. When we return, spotlight someone who shows us just how much high school graduates can accomplish within their first few years out. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. One of the things you can look for in your friends is a change in behavior. These can be big changes, they can be small changes in mood, physical appearance. They may be sleeping less or sleeping more, and drinking more, or their eating patterns may be different. One big change that can be pretty obvious is change in motivation. Do they no longer want to play basketball? Do they no longer want to play video games? Now that we're spending more time online and in virtual settings, it's really important to pay attention to the language that your friend is using and the words they're using to communicate. So when we text our friends, are they taking longer amounts of time to respond? Are they not responding at all? You don't have to be an expert to try to recognize these signs. The second that you feel it in your gut and that you're concerned, that's the second to have the conversation and open the door to what might be going on. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. Now it's time for our final segment, Person of the Week. This is where we highlight special people in our community who continue to inspire and provide toward others. And this week's recipient is Zach Goldman, 2018 West Bloomfield High School graduate. Zach sets a gold standard for what college students can do with passion, innovation, and entrepreneurship. He took his love for music, entertainment, and DJing to the next level by creating a live entertainment business, Schlepper Boy Vision. SB Vision brings both up-and-coming and, and well-known artists to college campuses for nightlife experiences like none other. And Zach sees a value in live performances rather than just pressing play on an iPhone, which is something he wanted to share with his peers. Prior to COVID-19, he spent weekdays studying hard at Michigan State University and weekends traveling around the country to put on shows. Zach's drive and dedication for working hard toward a passion is what makes him our person of the week. If you know someone who is making a positive difference, let us know. Message us on social media with any and all suggestions because we want to congratulate and acknowledge those making a difference in our community. That's it for this week's show. You can watch new episodes anytime online in HD at CivicCenterTV.com, Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m., Civic Center TV on Comcast 15 and AT&T Channel 99. And of course, follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Civic Center TV. You can also listen to me weekdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on WWJ News Radio 950 and online on the Odyssey app. For all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Hego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Brooke Allen. <laughs>